Every time I'm at a conference, I end up standing around the campfire at some point telling really absurd jokes, like punchline jokes. And uh, when I showed up yesterday, um, when Brian asked me to do this, Pauline, <clears throat> I think for the first time, she said, so you're the comedian. So after, uh, maybe after a few beers, you can catch me in a corner and I'll tell you some really ridiculous uh, jokes. But uh, what's interesting is like, you have to figure out like, how much time it's going to take to get everything set up, and then like, what do you say in between? And we're good. And he saves me. That's all. Yeah. Hi. Uh, if you don't know me, my name is Jeff Griffiths. You probably don't know me. I'm an actual product manager. I work with Mozilla on the Firefox Developer Tools team. Um, <laughs> there's a bunch more of us way in the back for the nerds or cool kids or the metal kids at the back of our way to right now. Um, and so we're really excited to be here for all day today um, for a number of reasons. What I want to say to Foam Gap developers, uh, I'm from Vancouver actually, um, and so I've known about Adobe and then they're uh, you know, purchased by Adobe and the product for quite a while. You can't avoid them in Vancouver, they're always out of the bar drinking. Uh, my sense of the mobile web and what's been going on with app development with the mobile web is that Foam Gap is, you guys are the pioneers who've been doing it for like five years. I, I dug up this quote from Brock, who's a good friend of mine. Uh, this is from 2008, like that was a while ago. And uh, back in 2008, Mozilla didn't really have much mobile stuff. We were sort of working on a browser, and we wasn't working on that at all for a while. And, then, uh, and here's a quote from this year from Brandon Knight about the project that we started, really got going about two years ago when I joined Mozilla, is that we thought the web should be the platform, the web should have its own phone. And that's, that's really core to what we're doing as a company, and I think it aligns pretty well with, with phone gap developers and their attitude about taking the web as a platform and, and taking it out to mobile. Um, since I joined Mozilla, just as an anchor, I think I was employee like 320 or something, which is, you know, 300 is a lot. We have 900 employees right now. What's driving my growth for Mozilla is two key initiatives. First, there's Firefox OS, and there's the open web apps infrastructure and also our Android browser that uh, also supports the open web app stuff. And that's, that's where all of our growth is. We're going mobile, and we think it's really important. Um, our outgoing CEO has this quote, that the next billion users on the web will only access it through a mobile device. Joe didn't have a charge for that, but, but it's sort of in anyway. So it's been a pretty few five years, but like, one of the things that, uh, when I showed Brock last year, uh, a Firefox OS device, he was like, man, this thing might work out after all. Like, this, this web mobile thing. He was, he was pretty impressed. So that's a pretty picture. And actually, we have a really great artist named Sean Marcel who does all of our logos. I think he really knocked it out of the park with that one. So, props to Sean. So, Firefox OS, it's been going on for a while. Um, there's been a number of attempts in the mobile space with web technology. Um, we're shipping. We shipped a couple weeks ago in Spain. Poland, uh, we're rolling out to a number of other countries. They may not, you know, be the countries that you're used to seeing for mobile releases, so we're not doing anything in the US anytime soon, or like top five European countries. Um, we're not doing anything in Canada. Uh, our focus is on, I don't know if you've seen the price point for Firefox OS in Spain, 65 euro with a 30 dollar credit. It's an incredibly affordable phone, and it boots straight to the web, and everything on it is made for web technology. And it's all open source, and, and there's a whole bunch of people that we're partnered with that are working on it. Um, it's at that very low end price point, um, but they're still quite useful phones. We have a couple at the table, you should come by and check them out if you don't have one. Or actually, Phil has a key on, but he wanted a, a hack to look at it. You can buy them, and, and we also have a marketplace for web apps, packaged apps like PhoneGap is uh, sort of a packaged app. And, and also just hosted apps, and uh, it has payments. So we're actually pretty serious about not just, well, we've got this program for runs some web stuff, but can you build a business on it? Are there millions of users of Firefox OS right now? No, there are not. But they're, we're going to be launching and uh, spreading out over the year to a number of countries. We're, we're very serious with our partners, which includes you know, big carriers like Telefonica and Deutsche Telekom. Um, big manufacturers like ZTE and LG, and, uh, and so over the next couple of years we see a lot more activity in this space. 
current status for phone gap support, um, which is what I really want your feedback on if you, if you have any comments about this at all. Uh, this is a wiki page where we're plotting out all the APIs and all the issues that come crop up with getting you know, a phone gap app that you, you would just make normally or one of the examples and have it push seamlessly to Firefox OS. Um, this works for a very limited amount of device APIs right now, but we're going to expand those out. We're really interested in your feedback of what, what you need for your development and uh, what we should prioritize. Because we're, we're making those decisions like right now. So we also want you to not think of Firefox OS as this, just another build target for phone gap, like you've got Blackberry on this phone and all these kinds of things. We're like a partner in this. Like we've got Firefox OS phones, we've got Android web apps. The key thing here is we're standardizing device APIs. We're working with whoever we can work with, so that includes Samsung, I think, is putting some of our APIs into Tizen. Uh, I saw that Blink has uh, you know, intended to implement at least the vibration API. We want web apps on phones to have access to devices, which is exactly where PhoneGap started. Um, and so we really, uh, we want those to be web standards as well. So that's a really important process to us. So even if, you know, let's say that Firefox OS phones are okay in the market and it's great, um, but it never takes off to like 50 or 60 percent of market share. But if in two or three years we never talk about making mobile apps without talking about web technology and all these great device APIs, then on our part for Mozilla V1, um, that's our goal is to put the web platform first on mobile, not to sell a bunch of phones. Uh, selling phones is nice, but our primary goal is always to go with the in concert with this, I, I'm speaking for my own team, developer tools team. We have a bunch of cool stuff they're building to make like mobile web app uh, development much easier. We have who's here tried out the Firefox OS simulator? Show of hands. A couple people. Um, this is it. It's pretty cool. I've got like a Cordova test app here. This would be like that 30 second demo. And that's a really simple app that if you put on the phone, it actually vibrates. Um, and we've got like a nice total simulation. Uh, this is the actual OS running in the simulated environment. So that's like one tool that we're, we've got a lot of traction with that is there to help you uh, do development. It's hooked up to, this is a debugger interface that's running in Firefox, so you can debug your code and step through it, you've got logging, that kind of thing. We've got things in the roadmap, like actual inspection of elements in your app uh, remotely. And this also works if I plug the device in, it would say, do you want to push to the device? You can just push the app to the device. So that's uh, a big part of what we're doing right now. Where we're going is making that kind of uh, you know, development cycle much easier. Another cool thing we have is this responsive design view. So you can sort of resize stuff if you're just working in the browser. You can pop out of it. So coming soon, it's really a more powerful on-device tool. So remote debugging an actual device, as you would expect with other mobile ecosystems. And deep extensibility, one of the cool things about Firefox is we have a great, powerful extension API. We really think that people will want to create cool tools uh, as we make our developer tools more extensible. So you should check it out. Um, this is a, a checklist. You download Firefox Aurora. The Aurora channel here runs Firefox often or, or for testing. So, cool, nice to see. Um, and so we have several channels. We have the Read Reads channel, we've got a beta. Aurora is really um, where all the fresh stuff is. So if you're running Aurora, you know what's coming down the pipe, you'll have that early testing thing. But it doesn't, it's not a nightly build, so it's not going to break you know, between two or three different days, it's relatively stable. So I really recommend Firefox Aura. You install Firefox OS Simulator 4. If you can get your hands on a, a Firefox OS device, that's cool. You've got the simulator as well. And also, um, we've got our developer that we've got working full time to do the phone gap integration, and he's developing uh, some examples and, and working through problems with, with Cordova integration as we speak. So that's that's a in particular the example that I just showed you. And that's kind of it. So we have 10 minutes this morning. Is there any questions before I go? Um, and do you 
looking at the PGA uh, hashtag, we got a, a nice little giveaway for some Mozilla Spy happening later today. And uh, we're at the back table, so if you have any questions for me later, if you want to see a demo, let me know. Thanks.